एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम रीति एंड आई एम बैक विद अनदर लेक्चर इन द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सीरीज इन द लास्ट कपल ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी डिस्कस्ड ऑन द टाइप ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी वुड बी डिस्कसिंग ऑन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम स्ट्रक्चर डिफाइंस हाउ इट्स कॉम्पोनेंट्स आर ऑर्गेनाइज एंड इंटरैक्ट टू मैनेज द हार्डवेयर एज वेल एज सॉफ्टवेयर रिसोर्स एफिशियंटली सो एज आई टोल्ड एट यूजर इंटरैक्ट विद ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम एंड ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इंटरैक्ट विद द हार्डवेयर सो बेसिकली ऑल दीज कॉम्पोनेंट्स आर ऑर्गेनाइज टूगेदर एज पार्ट ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चर सो दैट देर कुड बी अ बेटर कम्युनिकेशन Now, what are the components of an operating system? So, I already have a video where I have discussed about the components of operating system. You can go ahead and have a look at that. So, here we have kernel, system calls, memory management, process management, file system, device drivers, and user interface. Now, what are the types of operating system structure? So, first one is simple structure. Second is monolithic. Third is layered. Fourth is micro kernel. Fifth is hybrid kernel. Sixth is modular. And seventh one is virtual machines. So the first structure is simple structure. Now, as the name suggests, simple. So we haven't thought much about modular designing or keeping everything in modules as part of this structure. So a simple structure operating system lacks a clear modular design, making its component tightly integrated. So all the components which are present here are tightly integrated. Now it is small, fast, and easy to develop. but less secure and unstable so it is less secure and unstable the example is ms dos now it allows application to directly access the hardware so here you can see that there is a application program then there is a system program or you can say operating system then there are some device drivers which are present so here you can see that the application program can go ahead and directly access the device drivers or the hardware correct so here you can see because of this reason it is less secure and unstable now the second one is a single program failure can crash the entire system since they all are dependent a lot on each other the application program can go ahead and access the device is driver if there is any single program failure it will just go ahead and crash the entire system so what are the advantages fast performance due to fewer layers so since there are less layers we didn't thought much about the modular design it is fast easy to develop for the kernel programmers so again there are not much layers which is present here so it is very easy to develop as well so the disadvantages are first one no clear structure making it complex to manage so there is no clear structure the application program can go ahead and access the hardware or the device driver so there is no clear structure which is present here second one is lack security as process can directly access the system resources so any process can go ahead and access the system resources directly so there is no proper layering which is present even the proper layering is present application program can go ahead and access the hardware or the device drive now the second one is monolithic structure so monolithic is like far better than the simple structure so monolithic structure operating system is a single large program where all essential services like process management memory management file system and device drivers run together in kernel mode so all these things process management file management device drivers all those are present in the kernel mode so application programs contact to the kernel and then kernel contact to the hardware for all the purpose Uh, now the example are linux and unix so what is kernel so the kernel is the central component of os that ensures that the communication between the hardware and software so basically kernel ensures the communication is smooth between the hardware and the software it provides fundamental services like process management memory management device communication ensuring the system runs efficiently and securely so it makes sure that there is proper process management proper memory management and proper device communication now what are the advantages of monolithic so it's fast performance due to the direct communication between the components so since there is a direct communication between the components it is fast now it is easier to build since everything is in one block since everything is present in this one block it is very easier to build now what are the disadvantages difficult to maintain as small error can crash the entire system so even if there is any small errors which is present here it can go ahead and crash the entire system because consider a process stops working there could be a system crash which can happen now the next one is security risk due to the lack of strict isolation between the components so between all these components there is no strict isolation which is present which can uh, result in some security breaches as well now the third one is layered structure so the operating system is divided into multiple layers each providing services to the layer above so there is a user layer there is a hardware then there is layer 1 layer 2 till 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 layer n now you can think layered architecture like a cake 
with multiple layers each performing a specific role so basically the layer 0 is the hardware and the layer 1 or the layer n is the user interface now consider we are in any layer x and there could be a layer x plus 1 above that and there would be a layer x minus 1 below that now this particular x will take services from x minus 1 and will provide services to x plus 1 so basically if we are doing any changes to the layer x it needs to be only reflected in x minus 1 and x plus 1 the above layer don't need to get effect from any changes which is happening in x so the example is windows nt now what are the advantages so it's easier debugging and modification again i told that if we have to modify any layer we have to just inform the above and the below layer we don't need to inform all the layers if we are doing any changes in any of the layer now coming to the next one more secure since lower layers are protected from the higher layers so all the lower layers are kind of protected from the higher layers so we can say that it is more secure now what are the disadvantages so performance overhead due to interlayer communication now since there are different layer all layer needs to communicate with each other so the performance is not very good in this particular case now the second one is strict layering can cause inefficiencies so since there are strict layering which is present here it can cause the system to be inefficient now coming to the fourth one that is micro kernel structure now only essential os functions example process and memory management run in the kernel while other services run in the user space you can think micro kernel architecture like a company where only critical tasks are handled by the core team while the other tasks are outsourced so earlier what was happening in the monolithic is if the kernel was doing all those things process management memory management device drivers and all those things were done by the kernel so it was making the kernel bulkier so in this uh, micro kernel structure what we are saying is we'll make the kernel micro or we'll make the kernel small so that kernel does not have a lot of load and it will only perform the tasks which are critical so here we can see now the kernel is only performing the inter-process communication the memory management and the cpu scheduling earlier it was also taking care of the file system it was taking care of the device driver which is now moved to another mode which is called as user mode so here in the kernel mode we have inter-process communication memory management and cpu scheduling which is making the kernel as a micro kernel and the application program file system and device drivers comes to the user mode earlier only application program was there but now the file system and device driver has also come to the user mode now how they will communicate so inter-process communication and memory management can communicate via the message passing so the communication between the user as well as the kernel mode can happen via the messages so the examples are mac os QNX and Minix. Now coming to the advantages. So first one is more stable as a failure in one module won't crash the whole system. Now the next one is easier to extend and modify. The disadvantages are slower due to frequent communication between the kernel and the user space. As I told now they needs to communicate via messages and since in the kernel now there are very less things which are present they often need to communicate with the file system and the device drivers so there will be more number of inter-process communication which will happen. Now the next one is more complex implementation. Again the implementation becomes complex because we are just reducing the number of components in the kernel. Now the next one is hybrid kernel structure. So basically as the name suggests hybrid, it is a combination of features from monolithic as well as micro kernel. In monolithic, in kernel we used to have device drivers, process management, memory management, all those things. In micro kernel we told that the kernel shouldn't be bulkier, only the critical component should be there like inter-process communication, memory management and process management. And then there were two modes, user mode and the kernel mode. Now coming to the hybrid one, we make sure that we achieve a balance between the the performance and modularity by combining the features of both monolithic kernels and micro kernels. In hybrid kernel, it follows the micro kernel architecture but includes some traditionally user space services like device drivers, file system or network stacks inside the kernel space. So basically it is following the micro kernel structure but it is also including the ones which are present in the user spaces of micro kernel like device driver, file system or network stacks in the kernel as well so that it can also follow the monolithic thick so inside the kernel space for better performance now hybrid kernel aimed to reduce the inter-process communication which was a bottleneck in the micro kernel because uh, there were a lot of inter-process communication which needs to be there between the device drivers between the file systems and much more things so that particular bottleneck is taken care here so we can say that it has reduced the inter-process communication overhead which is a major drawback for the micro kernels so this was all about the structure of operating system i hope you like this video so if you like this video please hit the like button if you're someone who is new to my channel can go ahead and watch out the tech content first and if you find it useful can go ahead and subscribe also if you have not followed me on my social media handles you can go ahead and follow the links are in the description till then
टेक केयर कीप लर्निंग कीप ग्रोइंग कीप स्माइलिंग बाय ऑल